Hey, it's Dr. Banjo. Hello, everyone. This is Joe Smith, the Houston County Extension Agent here in Crockett. Um, we're really glad that you could join us tonight for our Ag in the Evening program series. Uh, myself, along with Shaniqua Davis um, and Jacob Spivey from uh, both Great County and Tyler County, uh, have put this series together along with Dr. Banta and Dr. Olson. Um, and it turned out to be a really good educational series. Um, I hope you enjoy tonight. Uh, we are talking about our annual cow cost. It's something I think that we all think we know what they are, but do we truly know what they are? Um, Dr. Banta did this program for me back in September. And I'll tell you, that was probably one of the most um, at this program created more questions and more discussions um, throughout that entire series than any other program I think I've ever done. Um, I think it's very eye-opening to a lot of things that maybe we don't even think about when we get through this day to day. So uh, I hope that you find this uh, beneficial. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the program, just type them in your chat box. You'll find that if you scroll down at the bottom of your screen. And then at the end of the program, um, we'll open it up for discussion. Um, you should have gotten a, a spreadsheet and an email um, that has this, so you can have it on your own, uh, work on it on your own time, as well as follow along with Dr. Bank tonight. Um, but with that, Dr. Bank, I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Joe. Um, so just a couple things real quick. Um, I have launched another poll. Uh, there's a couple questions there. If you'll go ahead and vote while I'm talking here on what you think may be the most appropriate estimate of expenses in relation to equipment, um, hay cost, and fertilizer for your operation, and we'll incorporate them throughout some of the discussion tonight. This is meant to be an interactive tool. Everybody's gonna have different costs and expenses. So I'll kind of talk about what I see some uh, realistic estimates for a lot of operations. Realize some costs may not fit your operation. So just apply the appropriate ones to your operation at, at that point in time. Uh, as Joe mentioned, uh, we did this uh, in Houston County earlier. And one of the hot topics really came up was questions about equipment cost. Uh, and some people thought their cost was maybe a little lower than the ones I shared. And, and that definitely could be the case. And if that is, just use your adjustment. Uh, I'll tell you, a lot of people way underestimate that. And so we'll, we'll go through these costs. The way this spreadsheet is set up is anything that you see in blue, whether it's a number over here in column C, or if it's a description over here in column A, you can enter in whatever you want uh, in that space. And then everything else is locked down so you don't have to worry about it messing something up. I'm on the annual cow cost tab here at the bottom, but there is a directions tab if you ever had a reason to go back and look at that. Uh, so that'd be the first tab. Annual cow cost would be the second here. And then the last call uh, tab is estimating costs. So for some things, we have a pretty good estimate right off the top of our head. Some things we really want to run through some more math to get a little better estimate on that. So that's what this one is. Um, and it's grouped depending on topics. And it's not everything, but I'll have some of the bigger ones. So estimating annual hay needs and cost, estimating mineral needs and cost, uh, a big one here, estimating annual cow depreciation, estimating bull breeding expenses. Um, and you could work some AI in here if you wanted to as well. And then a couple different scenarios. So if you wanted to look at different prices of bulls or different bull to cow ratios, you can look at some of that. And then the equipment one I mentioned here, um, and so just list the appropriate equipment for your operation. I left plenty of spots that you can enter additional equipment, what you purchase that equipment for, what's the salvage value, any annual maintenance uh, fees, how many years do you think you'll use that piece of equipment, and then how many cows would that piece of equipment apply to? So a squeeze chute, you know, and 
unless you have multiple pieces of property, that squeeze chute's going to apply to all the animals on that property. Same thing when we think about uh, a tractor. Now, if it's an ATV and you're using it for recreation in addition to livestock use, then maybe on the purchase price, just put, put the portion of that purchase price that you would want to apply to livestock. And you can go in there. A lot of these things will go across multiple years. Some of them won't last as long, so we'll have less years there. That way you can kind of work through and figure out uh, what your costs are going to be from an equipment standpoint on your operation and then those other categories as well. The other thing I did when I set the spreadsheet up is you always hear people talk about, well, this category represents the biggest expense for your operation. And when you run the math, sometimes what you hear other people talk about may not be uh, the one that represents the greatest cost of your operation. Winter feeding is typically one you always hear as the biggest. And I'm going to show you, depending on how we figure some things, it may not be the biggest expense category for your operation. And so as we enter numbers in and change numbers, it'll calculate the total expense of your annual cost that's being represented by that category. So we'll just start off with herd health, and I'll just kind of walk through uh, the values I used, and then we'll, we'll look at how that impacts. And then we can go in and look at some different things and, and change some costs and see how that may affect the operation. So when we look on annual cow vaccine, I put $4 in there. Where I got that is if you think back to the um, last presentation I gave on vaccine cost, um, I guess that would be two weeks ago now. Um, we talked about using a clostridial vaccine and then a potential combination vaccine that would have our viral pathogens, our lepto, uh, the five traditional strains of lepto, and then the hard bovis. So that'd be products like Virus Shield 6 plus L5HB or the Pyramid 10 HB. Looking those costs up, you're looking at about $3.50 a dose. And then for that clostridial vaccine, you're looking at about uh, 50 cents a dose. So that's where I came up. We're going to give those once a year to the cows. So that's where I came up with $4. Uh, deworming costs, that's a hormone uh, dewormer, uh, buying it in a bigger quantity. So buying it in a 5 or a 10 liter quantity and deworming that cow twice a year. For a 13, 1,350-pound cow, you're looking at 7 to $7.50. Uh, external parasite control is going to kind of depend on your operation and how you want to figure this. If you figured some ear tags or you figured some poron in combination with some spraying, you're looking at somewhere 3 to $5 uh, head there on the poron side, a little more for the ear tags. And then if you use the ear tags in addition to poron, uh, maybe a little higher. So somewhere in that 3 to $7 range. So I just went ahead and entered in the middle there a $5 cost. Now, calf vaccine, you may be wondering, why do I have a higher value entered in here from a calf standpoint? Well, remember those calves haven't ever been vaccinated before. So we're going to need to give them that initial dose. And then we're going to need to follow up with the second dose. And so if we just think about that similar program to what we did on the cow herd, Two rounds of that would be $8. And then if we think about selling those calves in a preconditioned calf sale, uh, we're going to have to give uh, Mannheimia hemolytica and then probably Histophosomnus in there. So I went ahead and added another $4 for that cost. Uh, deworming that calf, um, a couple different options depending on what, what you're using there, but a combination of macrocytic lactones and then a white product I just figured $5 for deworming for the calf. A uh, little bit of external parasite control. I didn't put an implant cost in here, but if you are implant, you'd want to put that in. Typically, those implants are going to be running roughly a dollar to $1.50 per head. Any vet expenses, and this is one we overlook a lot because it, we may not be doing it on a regular basis, so we don't think about it, um, but it's a good idea to go ahead and put a little cost in there. If you don't want to put any in there, that, that's fine. I just figured $2 per head. 
So maybe we had a bigger expense, but when we spread that out across the herd, we're not talking about a huge cost there. Um, and then when we look at, then when we look at the total for kind of our vaccine or deworming and our parasite control, I would consider that herd health. I came up with about $37.50 per animal. Uh, which right now, based on the other cost I have put in the spreadsheets, running about 5% of our annual cost. And like I said, this is, you can put in whatever uh, values are appropriate for your operation um, and customize it, but kind of wanted to give you some general cost. Now, when we look at breeding expenses, this is maybe one we don't think about a lot. Um, and so what we really need to think about in there is what do we pay for that bull? How many years are we gonna have that bull in operation? What is that bull gonna be worth when we go to sell him? How many cows are we gonna expose him to? And then what's an annual maintenance cost for that bull? Because he's eating forage, he's taking up space, he's eating hay, we have to deworm him and those things as well. Uh, I entered $35 in there just to kind of show you uh, where that may come from, and there's a lot of variation on this, but if we think about uh, what may be typical of a lot of producers uh, these days, again, have in purple here would be estimating those annual bull breeding expenses. If you have AI, you would just want to add that in addition and then change your bull to cow ratio a little bit. So if we just look at scenario A, I put $3,000 in there, purchase price bull. People are spending less, people are, are spending more, so we can adjust those numbers a little bit if we wanted to. Um, on value when sold uh, as a market bull, so he's gonna be turned into hamburger typically. Rather than using current prices, uh, I've used what we've kind of seen for the last few years, and actually at least on the uh, Coal, cow, and bull market, current prices are, are pretty consistent. Uh, when we look at calf value, given what we have going on with COVID-19, those prices are, are, are a little uh, different than what they have been traditionally, so we'll take that into account at the end of the spreadsheet. But if I just figure 3000 purchase price, $1,800 um, salvage value, so bringing a little less than a dollar a pound, assuming He's weighing 2,000 to 2,200 pounds. Um, then I would calculate what I call a genetic cost of $1,200 uh, for that bull. So that's what it's, it's, that's when I subtract those two, that's what I have left. And that's his genetic cost. You could call, call that depreciation if you want. Figure $625 for annual cow cost. On average, you get four years out of the bull. Sometimes we don't get that many. Sometimes we get more. So four hour, four uh, years kind of be a reasonable average there. Especially if you're buying yearling bulls, we may not use those bulls as heavy that first year. So you can put in that lower bull to cow ratio. So I just figured 15 here. After that, I'm going to expect that bull, especially when we think about East Texas or Central Texas and our lower stocking rates as far as less acres per cow-calf pair. I'm gonna expect that bull to, to cover more cows. So I figured 30 there um, for three years. So over his production time, he's covering 105 cows. When we look at that, what that means is per cow exposed. All right, so not per pregnant, but per cow exposed because that's what we really have to figure this on. Uh, about $11.40 in depreciation or genetic cost. When I look at maintenance cost, uh, almost $24 there gives me about $35 in breeding cost. If I went in here just to say, well, I'm not using that bull as much. So uh, in scenario A and B, I have the purchase price is the same, the number of cows, um, is the same on that first year, but then that second, from the second, third, and fourth year, let's just say he's only covering 20 cows. Well, that, because now in his production span, sorry, 
in his production span, we go from him potentially breeding 105 cows to only 75 cows. That changes my breeding cost from 35 up to $49 there. So I just went ahead and used the 35, and that's what I have in the uh, cell right there. Question came in, and I'll go ahead and answer it real quick. Uh, on the vaccine cost, I said $37.50 per animal, um, but I showed cost for both the cow and the calf. Yes, but when we're thinking about annual cow cost, we're only talking about the cow. We don't count that calf because the costs for the calf are rolled in to the cow, if that makes sense. Uh, so it's only for the calf each, or the, excuse me, the cow each year, and the calf's gonna be figured into that. Now, if you keep replacement heifers or if you take those calves past a traditional weaning period, then you would want to look at a separate budget for them that stocker cattle or replacement heifers at that point in time. But prior to weaning and through that preconditioning period, all the costs associated with that calf are going to go into our annual cow cost. All right, so the second part of that question, am I assuming that this is an annual cost for a cow that has a calf each year? Yes and no, and you'll see when we get to the bottom of the spreadsheet, and this is where the math changes a little bit depending on what your weaning rate is. I'm gonna assume this cost for any cow that was exposed to a bull. Now realize some of them aren't gonna have a calf, um, so they wouldn't technically have this cost for vaccine and dewormer, and if you wanted to reduce your cost uh, by 10 or 15%, there you could. But from a budgeting standpoint, and to keep it simple, I'm just going to go ahead and figure that cost for those calves, assuming at this point in time, we're going to have as many live calves born as possible and we're approaching 100%. Uh, does that answer that question? You can just type in yes or no or, or add an additional one. But I'm figuring it for every cow that's exposed to a bull at this point in time. Uh, pregnancy determination, realize some people do that, some people don't. Um, when we look at really managing uh, in tighter markets uh, and the cost uh, associated with keeping those open cows, that pregnancy determination can be cost well spent. If you're hiring somebody to do that, you may be looking at three to seven dollars per head, maybe a little more if you don't have many cows. If you're looking at pulling a blood test and sending it off on your own, um, then you can be in that $3 range. That's what I went ahead and put in there. So that's figuring the syringe and needle, the blood tube, the cost of the test, and the cost of shipping. Uh, the lab that I send my personal blood test to would be, uh, it used to be in Idaho. It's just across the border now in Washington. They're right now charging about $2.50 a test. That others is figuring um, syringes and tubes uh, and needles in that situation. I didn't put any cost in here for perennial pasture depreciation or establishment, but especially if you just uh, planted some new uh, Tifton 85 or Coastal or Bahia or any of those perennial pastures, you'd want to go ahead and figure a cost in there as well. I did go ahead and figure in annual pasture establishment. And what we're talking about there is our winter pasture, um, especially when we're thinking about East and Central Texas, uh, ryegrass is an extremely cost-effective tool. So that's looking at the cost of that ryegrass um, seed there, depending on what it's gonna be. I figured a little higher. Uh, and, and part of that depends on what rate. If you're only planting at 25 uh, pounds per acre based on cost the last couple of years, you'd be somewhere between 20 and $25 uh, per acre. Now here's one thing you would wanna adjust depending on whether you're spring cabin or fall cabin. And, and this is where I said everybody's costs are a, a little different. If you're fall cabin, we're gonna plant roughly an acre per cow-calf pair. If you're spring calving, we're gonna plant an acre for roughly every three cow-calf pairs. So if you were spring calving, what I would do 
is instead of figuring $25, I'd figure about $8 there for that cost. So I'm going to leave it for, for fall, Kevin, here initially. And so leave it at 25 Hay cost. And this is one of those um, that really can be variable depending on what your stocking rate is, how you're figuring it, and those kind of things. Um, let me go ahead and see if I can share these results with everybody. So hopefully you're able to see those results. But if you can't, I'll just go ahead and tell you. So when we look at what is the most appropriate hay feeding expenses per head on your operation, um, one vote for less than $20 a head, one vote for 50, two for 75, one for 200, and uh, two votes for greater than 200. So see quite of a range there. You said, well, and some of you may have voted based off of what I put in there, and I put $45. Now that's basically figuring one bale uh, per cow-calf pair, which for a lot of operations, that's not near enough. If you're not planting winter pastures, then you're probably looking at somewhere between three and four bales, and I'm figuring a, an 1,100, 1,200 uh, pound bale there. So you're looking at three to 4,000 pounds of hay minimum. Uh, depending on what your situation, you could be more or less than that. So I'm figuring quite a bit of use on winter pasture. So not having to feed hay as long as only one bale. Um, and so in the scenario right now for that, it's representing about 6% uh, of my cost. But if you're having to figure four bales at $45 a bale, then you're looking at $180 in that situation. And that'd be over 20% of your cost. So quite a bit of variation depending on what you're figuring that hay is worth and then how much you're needing to feed. And if you're wanting some help on estimating how much hay and what that expense would be, that's that first uh, estimating annual hay needs uh, in the blue here. So you can go ahead and put in your cow weight, hay intake per day. Uh, I'm going to tell you, if you're thinking about a lactating cow, you need to be figuring uh, roughly 2.5% of body weight there. If we're thinking about a cow in late gestation, you can figure about 23 you want to be a little safe, go a little higher. I went ahead and, and for this purpose, just kind of averaged them. So 2.4% uh, there. That cow then would be needing a little over 32 pounds of hay a day on a dry matter basis. If we figured on with the moisture included, about 36 pounds of hay a day is what she would potentially consume. We need to think about storage losses and feeding losses. And so you can put various adjustments in there for that. How long are you feeding hay? So are we feeding hay for 30 days? Or are we feeding hay for 120 days? Uh, if we feed 120, so if we think about one of those cool late springs and we're having to feed hay longer, or we have to start feeding hay sooner in the winter, in this situation, we'd be needing over 5,000 pounds of hay. So if you're only talking about 1,000 pound bales, you're talking about at least five bales put your cost in there, um, and then it'll go ahead and calculate how many bells you need and the size of the bell, how many bells you need per cow, and what the cost is. So here, you know, based on these assumptions, we're looking at about $115 versus the, the $45 I put in there. Now, where's that difference going to come in? Fertilizer cost is where some of that's going to be. So since we're planting some winter pasture and assuming we're going to do some stockpile Bermuda grass because both of those will make my uh, feeding bill cheaper and actually are more cost efficient than feeding hay. I'm going to have a higher fertilizer cost when we get down lower in the spreadsheet. So just keep that in mind for right now. Uh, protein and energy supplements. So typically thinking about feeding Late summer, if it starts to get dry and those manure patties start stacking up. Uh, and then again, in the winter, depending on what our hay quality is, this would be on the lower side uh, since we're figuring more fertilizer and winter pasture here. If you're not figuring as much fertilizer and you're not figuring winter pasture, you would be considerably higher than this. 
uh, mineral supplement. I won't walk through the math, but that is on that estimating cost uh, tab. There's one for figuring mineral cost in there. So you can look at that. I just went ahead and figured 40. That's going to be pretty close for most people. When we look at equipment costs, this is where I told you there's going to be a, a tremendous amount of variation. And unfortunately, there's a lot of times cost here that get overlooked that we don't think about. So we need to think about the tractor, the trailer, the feed bumps, the hay rings, the squeeze chute. Um, if you're using a pickup part of the time for the cow operation, you, you may want to include that. ATVs, just a whole list of things uh, we could potentially have in there. So if we just look at a results from the poll real quick, uh, one vote for $20 ahead, one for 30, two for 40, two for 60, uh, and then one vote for, for greater than 70. So at that $40, I'm kind of in the middle of the responses that came in there. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and leave it at 40 right now and we can play with that later. Uh, go ahead and put you a little bit of something in there for fuel. So your tractor, that ATV, the pickup truck, uh, if you want to drop that a little lower, you could. So if you wanted to go $2 per cow instead of five, um, I, I wouldn't have an issue with that. Fencing depreciation or new construction, this is something we, we want to budget in there. Even if you're not building a new fence now, at, at some point in the future, you will, and it's going to affect your cost. So go ahead and just start thinking about what that means from a budget. Now, that may not be on your, your bottom line this year when you run your final numbers, but from a budgeting standpoint, making decisions, you want to think about that. Labor, if you're hiring labor, you definitely want to put that in. If it's your own labor, you can make an argument whether you want to include it or not. I'll leave it for zero right now. Uh, same thing with interest and finance charges will vary from operation to operation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave those for zero. I want to make a comment while we're here right now on the interest and finance charges. So with all the challenges we do have going on with the challenging market and an uncertain future due to uh, the coronavirus situation, now, especially with interest rates being dropped in a lot of areas, is a really good time to go in and make sure you have the lowest interest rate available on any kind of loans you have out there and really look at those financing charges and, and things to consolidate on the lowest interest and financing charges as much as possible. On the flip side of that, if you're in really good position uh, from a cash flow standpoint financially right now, this may be an opportunity to take advantage of some potential sales uh, and some reduction in prices on some uh, equipment or cattle or, or those kind of things out there right now and take advantage of that. So it's gonna vary, but, but really look at that close. The next one here is cow depreciation. You see I, I rolled $75 in there. How did I get to that number? So if we go over and look at our estimating cost, and in the gray here, in the easiest way to kind of think about it, and it's gonna vary a little bit, but a good way to think about it from a budgeting standpoint, is I like to think about what would be the purchase price of a long bred uh, heifer or cow and, and think in six to eight months there. So a few months before calving, because when we think about when we wean and sell those calves and then um, what that means for where those cows would be in gestation, that kind of represents a, a year time frame there. So I went ahead and enrolled $1,400 in there per head. Uh, some people are paying less than that. Some people are, are paying more than that. And what we really need to think about is what are those costs now? And in the future, what are those, those costs going to be? And those of you who may potentially have a few more cattle than what you really need, uh, the good thing is, at least at the current time, the market for good uh, breeding stock is, is still pretty strong. Uh, Jordan Cattle Company out at San Saba uh, back on the 16th uh, had a sale and looking at their price reports, that sale was pretty strong. So if you do need to cut back on some numbers, there may be some opportunities to market some of those animals at some still pretty good prices. 
figure what's the value of that cow when we get ready to sell her. Um, how many years is she going to be in production? So hopefully we keep her in production longer. Uh, and so I figured eight years of production here, I'm going to tell you some cows don't have but a couple and then some cows have uh, eight, 10, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that. Eight's um, a pretty good number. Uh, if, you, if you're having a cold cow sooner, I would drop that. But if we're figuring eight, uh, what we're looking at there is purchased her for 14, sold her for eight, that's a cost of 600, divide that by eight years, that's how we get that annual depreciation of $75 there. Okay, and then there's some room to enter any additional categories you would wanna figure into your budget for estimating that annual cow cost. And I really like to think about this as a budget. These are what I'm budgeting, this, this is what I'm thinking. Hopefully I'm not having to spend as much in some of these categories and that can save me some money throughout the year. But I wanna make sure I don't cut those expenses just to cut them because if I can get a return on investment by doing something, I wanna go ahead and continue to spend that money. The next section here, I set up a little bit different. So instead of being on a per head basis, it's gonna be on a per acre basis because a lot of these costs we think about from a per acre standpoint. And so how many grazable acres do you need per cow-calf pair? That could range from um, when we think about East Texas and, and parts of Central Texas, uh, two and a half to uh, 10 acres very easily. If we get out West, then those numbers go up even more, but then we, we're not spending that money on fertilizer and those kind of things. So a lot of variation here, depending on what your, your stocking rates are. So I'm thinking about uh, for this scenario that I put in here, an operation, that's really thinking about uh, being a little more aggressive in their management, spending a little more on fertilizer. So we have a, um, we don't need quite as many acres to graze those cow-calf pairs. So if we think about fertilizer cost per acre, and that's gonna have some fertilizer in there for uh, both a little bit of stockpiled forage as well a little bit of a winter pasture as well. Most of that fertilizer cost, we're gonna assume we're in pretty good shape on um, phosphorus and potassium. So most of that's gonna be nitrogen. Now here's an important point. These are for grazable acres, not your hay acres. So any fertilizer cost associated with hay, go ahead and put that up there in that hay cost. So I went ahead and figured $100 per acre there. So if I need three acres per cow-calf pair, that's $300 I'm spending in fertilizer. And I know that sounds like a, a big number, and it is, but when we look at the return on investment and what we get in regards of more fertilizer production for each pound of nitrogen we put out there, and if we have better forage, uh, then we don't have to supplement as much, plus those cows are in better body condition, we should see better breed up rates, plus they're in better body condition score, that means they milk a little bit better, uh, so we should see a little heavier weaning weights there. Um, the big thing is be as realistic as you can as you um, decrease the number of acres per cow calf pair. We got to figure more fertilizer in the budget. As we're running more acres per cow calf pair, we can drop that fertilizer cost. And we'll look at that here in a second. But go ahead and figure in 300 for right now. We control per acre, uh, figuring about $12, depending on what we're doing. Uh, we could be a little less potentially. So let's say we're just going one round of something like Grazon next at a, at a moderate rate. Maybe we're closer to $8 per acre. Forage insect control. I budgeted 10. I will tell you in most operations, I think we can easily justify $20. Now, hopefully we don't need to spend that, but when we think about how much forage army worms and grasshoppers can consume and how cheap it is to treat those, that is a very, very good return on investment. Here a couple of years ago, a uh, lot of people really got in a bind here 
because they didn't, they grew a lot of, we were dry during the summer, grew a lot of forage in the fall, but then we had a huge outbreak of army worms and they just made up their mind without looking at numbers that it was too expensive to spray for those army worms. Well, we could do a really good job for spraying with those army worms with using some Lambus Ihalothrin and some Demlin to give us some residual control for about $3 an acre. And I talked to numerous producers who easily lost a bell or two of, uh, per acre of forage. And when you think about what it was costing to replace that hay versus what it cost to spray those insects, that was a really cheap uh, cost to spray those insects and a great return on investment there. Uh, taxes, you may or may not want to figure them. Uh, I just kind of rolled $3 in there for right now. We could take those out here in a minute if, if you wanted to, but we're going to be paying some taxes on that property, so we probably want to budget that into that cow cost. Opportunity cost. So even if you own the property, you have the potential that if you wanted to, you could potentially lease that out and get some income on that, and that would be that opportunity cost. Uh, a lot of people would figure that as zero. They're saying, well, I'm not going to put anything on there. Uh, and if you choose to do that, that's fine. But in reality, when we're thinking about budgeting and making decisions on our cow-calf operation, we really should put an opportunity cost in there. So I, I went ahead and put one in there at $15 per acre. Um, so if we look at all that down here then in C39, it tells me my annual cow cost is $728.50. And then I can go up here and, and look at the percentages for each one of those. Now let's say I was gonna stock a little lighter, uh, allow a few more acres per cow-calf pair. I wouldn't need as much fertilizer. What does that do to the numbers? So if I go to uh, five acres per cow-calf pair, let's say we could drop down to maybe uh, $50 per acre in fertilizer, so we cut our fertilizer bill in half. We're looking at about $750, so 20 to $25 difference there, but you can kind of play around with those numbers and, and see what may be better for your operation, but be realistic on how much fertilizer you need. The other part of this equation that we really need to think about and this goes back up to the question that was asked earlier about assuming each cow has a calf each year. That's the way I'm gonna assume it when I figure uh, that vaccination and dewormer cost for those calves. But when I think about my profit or loss potential per acre, I need to figure in that weaning rate. And I'm gonna tell you, a lot of times you hear people, you need to be a low cost producer. Well, no, I don't wanna be a low cost producer. I'm going to be a high return on, on investment producer. So if uh, I can spend some money, it makes me more money. Those are expenses I want to use. We can cost ourselves a lot of money in the long run by not spending a, a few dollars in the appropriate situation. But even more important to uh, when we think about costs and being a high return on investment producer is reproduction and getting a live calf weaned is gonna be the most important thing to your bottom line. So what I went ahead and did here is so we can look at a couple of different scenarios and just look at how much weaning rate. And so what that is, is we think about how many cows we exposed to that bull. So then how many of them got pregnant? How many of them had a calf? But most importantly, of that total that we exposed to that bull, how many of them ended up weaning us a calf? That's what that weaning rate would be. Um, industry kind of goal is 85%. A lot of operations were well below that. Sometimes we're a little better than that. So I just went ahead and put 80% in here. That's when we looked at long-term SPA data, uh, we would be in that uh, 78 to 82% range typically. So if we figure 80%, all right, and then what is that calf going to be worth? So let me launch one last poll here real quick. Let everybody vote while I catch my breath for a second. When we think about selling that calf, go ahead and vote on what you think would be uh, an expected price. 
for, for your operation. And this is going to vary depending on what kind of calves we have, if we're selling those calves in a preconditioned cell or not, and those kind of things. Okay, so, so far, um, with roughly about 75% of the votes in, uh, almost 80 actually now, we're looking at 14% uh, of the folks said $650, 21% said $700, 21% said $750, 21% uh, said $800, 7% said $850, uh, 7% said 950. So if we kind of look at those numbers, just kind of a, a rough average real quick would be somewhere around $750. And you see in my example, I put 900. Um, and I put 900 because I'm figuring based on some of those numbers I use that we're weaning those bigger kids, we got good genetics, we got a good nutrition program in there, we're backgrounding and preconditioning that calf um, so that we can go ahead and sell them in a preconditioned calf sale, which is going to be worth more. Now, the key to selling those calves in a preconditioned calf sale is we got to wean them on grass with just a little protein supplement. If we try to put too much feed in them, that doesn't work. So if we just look at 900 right now, and then I'll change it to the 725. If we wean an 80% calf crop, we're losing a little over $30 per head exposed and about $6 per acre. At 90% calf crop, um, making almost $60 per cow, about $12 per acre. Not gonna happen in most situations, except rarely when we're looking at smaller number of cows. But just to show you from a comparison standpoint, if I could get 100%, I'd be looking at $150 in profit about $30 uh, per acre profit per cow in that situation. What happens if we look at $725 calf value? Numbers are not gonna be pretty with these expenses. So in all those scenarios, if that's what we're looking at, we're, we're losing money in all those scenarios. Um, so that tells us we need to look at where expenses are and figure out the best return on investment. We need to uh, look at, are there opportunities to potentially uh, market those calves at a, at a little higher price? And I'm, I'm gonna tell you at that seven, um, or excuse me, at that $900, and that's a net, so taking off um, commission and any kind of haul in there. I'm figuring having a 700 pound calf at the end of that precondition uh, period there. So those numbers are gonna vary, so put the numbers in that are most appropriate for, for your operation, but that's kind of what we're looking at. And you say, well, man, that, that number may, that annual cow cost may seem higher than what you expect. And I'll tell you that, that's what happens with most operations is when we actually work through the numbers, it, it's higher than what most people expect. We always wanna look at uh, our cow cost, look at that wean rate, and make sure we're managing as well as possible, but especially in these uh, uncertain times and uh, with the market that's a little more volatile and, and not knowing what it's gonna do in the future, we really wanna pay attention to what our, our expenses are and, and what those budgets are. The other thing I would really encourage you to do is really focus on keeping some meaningful records, uh, especially how many cows do you expose to that bull, um, how many calves did you end up weaning? So you can really look at that and get a better handle and then good records on costs. And if you're looking for some tools to do that, um, there's some simple spreadsheets available on uh, the beef.tamu.edu website. You can go to beef.tamu.edu, click on publications, click on spreadsheets. There's some record keeping examples. Um, there's also, if you want something a, a little more sophisticated, that'll give you more options. Uh, there's a couple of companies out there that have some really good software packages uh, for purchase that you can look at as well. So that's kind of what I wanted to look at and, and, and show you how you could look at some of those things and, and what it would mean for cost. So any questions anybody has, feel free to go ahead and unmute and ask those. 
or go ahead and type those in. When those are coming in, I'll, I'll kind of flip the scenario a little bit and just show you a little different. So if we were looking at, we weren't stockpiling that forage, we weren't using that winter pasture. So we take that winter pasture off, but now we have more expense in hay. What are we looking at? Uh, so let's just say uh, four rolls of hay at $40 a roll. It'd be about $160 there. Come down, um, I can drop my, so go back to that um, three acres. And remember when we were running three acres, we were looking at $100 in fertilizer. Drop that to 75 in fertilizer. We're still kind of setting somewhere between that 725 and 750. I'm going to tell you, I think that's a, a pretty good number to work off of. There's plenty of people that are, are considerably above that number. And then there are some operations that are, are below that number. But I think somewhere in that range is a, a good number to think about from a budgeting standpoint and a decision making standpoint. So any questions on any of that or, or any things you would like to look at it and see a little differently there? So one of the questions came in, um, what do I think about creek feed? So there's a lot of things we want to consider from a creek feed standpoint. I will tell you in most situations, creek feeding is going to be a money losing uh, proposition. So when we look at how many pounds of creek feed it takes to put on an additional pound of weight gain on those calves. Um, when we look at the, in the literature, uh, you'll see estimates anywhere, depending on the study and, and what the forage conditions were and what the creek feed uh, was, anywhere from three to about 45 pounds of creek feed for one pound of weight gain. I would tell you for a budgeting standpoint, I would typically figure 10 to 15 pounds of creek feed to one pound of weight gain. Uh, that weight gain is typically worth about 80 cents a pound when we think about value of gain and realize it's not what we're, price per pound we're selling those calves at because as they get heavier, that price per pound goes down. So the way we would calculate that value of gain is um, whatever, uh, let's say we were selling those calves weighing in, uh, 600 pounds, what are they worth per head at that weight? If we creep fed them and that increased their weight to 630 pounds or 640 pounds, let's just say 640. So what are they worth per head at 640? So we can take the differences between what are they worth at 640 and what are they worth at 600 per head, find out what that difference is per head, divide that by the 40 pounds we changed in their weight, and that will give us the value of each additional pound of weight gain. Historically, that runs about 80 cents per pound. Um, when corn is cheap, it goes down. When corn is expensive, it goes up. Uh, when I ran it here about two weeks ago, uh, it was running about 83 cents per pound on the numbers I was looking at. So when we look at 10 to 15 pounds of creek feed, to get an additional pound of gain, and that pound of gain's only worth 80 to 85 cents, typically that's not a, a money-making proposition for us. The other thing we want to think about from a creek feeding standpoint is those calves tend to be a little fleshier. Those fleshier calves will be discounted uh, from a marketing uh, standpoint. Those buyers don't want those calves as fleshy, so that will back up the price. Now, can there be some value if you can limit how much they ate or more importantly, if you could hand feed them for a little bit? Yes, that can, that can work. And in a handful of times, regular creep feeding could work, but in most situations, that's not gonna be a good return on investment. The other thing to keep in mind there is if you do decide to go ahead and creep feed, Make sure you start when those calves are babies and never let that creek feeder run out uh, because if, if we let it run out um, and then put some feed back in there or we wait to, till those calves are too big before we start to creep feed, we'll get some acidosis in those calves and even get some death in those calves. So question was, do I have a spreadsheet um, 
that could be used to look at whether uh, to background the calves or sell them right off the cow. Um, I, I have a partial one, uh, but it's not set up near, near as well as this, so it's, it's not ready just for everybody to use. But I can tell you, um, as long as you can wean those calves on grass and we don't spend very much money on feed in them, then it's almost always, unless we get a weird shift in that market, better to background those calves than to sell them right off the cow. Uh, typically when we look, and, and so for East Texas, I'll use the net bio cell at Sulphur Springs as an example. Uh, looking at, at their prices, typically I would figure $80 to $100 a head improvement for selling those calves in a special preconditioned calf sale. Uh, talking to Joe Don Poe, the co-owner there and the auctioneer. So he's looking at the calves he, that get sold through the net bio sell, and he's looking at the same quality calves that get sold just through the weekly auction. Visit him with him one day and ask him, I said, what do, what do you think the value is on that preconditioned calf sale? Interestingly enough, he threw out the exact same $80 to $100 a head I was figuring. Uh, so I, I feel pretty good about those numbers. Now, part of that is, is looking at selling calves individually um, and a non-preconditioned calves. So when we think about that net bio sale, you get a premium for preconditioning those calves, for weaning and vaccinating those calves. The other premium that we get that not thought about or talked about very often is the premium of selling those calves uh, in a truckload lot. So while you may only take 10 or 15 in there to sell, they can get grouped with all those other calves. And so once we get them in those bigger groups, there's a premium for that. That's what I would call that truckload lot set. So that $80, $100 a head is a combination of those two things. If you were able to sell those calves off the ranch in truckload lots through Superior Video Auction or something like that, then it's really just the preconditioned premium in there. And so that changes the equation a little bit, but generally it's still going to be better to vaccinate and background those calves. Um, the second part of that question was, is it better during certain times of the year? There can be some seasonality to, to that, especially when we think about spring calving operations and most of those calves being sold in the fall in September and October. That tends to be the seasonal low of the market. So if we background those calves, just by backgrounding them, we tend to shift them out of that seasonal low and maybe on a market that's moving up a little bit uh, better for us. So then we get the, the benefit of seasonality potentially increasing as well as the benefit of selling a, a vaccinated preconditioned calf sale. Um, be happy to visit with you more in detail, Sydney, if you would like, or you can get with your county agent. But generally, almost always, it's going to be cheaper or it's going to be more cost effective to background those calves. And the way I would do it uh, is I would set up my forage management program that I have good grass I can wean those calves on. So if I fence line wean them, cows are on one side of the fence, the calves are on the other side of the fence, I have good grass. Uh, those calves will continue to gain through that preconditioning period, um, so they're not backing up on us. And then if I don't have to feed them, but just a little bit of supplement, so I keep my supplement costs per head down to 10 or $15, that's cost effective. Now in that program, I'm only looking at those calves gaining three quarters of a pound to maybe a pound and a quarter a day. That's fine because what we're really worried about is how much does our net profit increase? And at those lower rates of weight gain, that can be much more cost effective in that situation than trying to get those calves to gain two or three pounds a day. All right, well, I'm not seeing anything else come in, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the program for the evening and everybody enjoy your evening.